Hi guys, my name is uh, Santa Llano. I'm one of the finalists for the 2017 Idiatum Bootcamp. Uh, I'm here with uh, Ben Fromm. It's, it's way you're Looks like Fromm, it's actually pronounced frame, like picture frame, frame. but I get Fromm a lot, you know, yeah. so I'll answer to that. Well, I, I'm glad I asked. Yeah, <laughs> that's ben good. Frame is Very here. good. Uh, can you explain uh, can, can you explain to the people watching what is it, what is it that you do? Yeah, okay, so um, I guess a variety of things. I, I kind of come from a writing background. I was in Los Angeles and uh, worked as a writer and sold a script to the studio, to Universal, and um, uh, worked for the writer uh, and author of the book, Save the Cat. Uh, and we consulted on movies. We worked on How to Train Your Dragon. Um, I used to work with Blake and read scripts for him and talk about movies and help him and assist him when he was doing the workshops. And uh, Blake has since passed away. Um, but the book obviously remains and his legacy remains and so we've kind of continued um, uh, teaching the principles of that story uh, in the classroom but also in workshops. I, I do workshops in New York City. I now live in, in uh, New York um, uh, and also I, I guess seminars or w whatever we would term this is, has also proven to be good experiences meeting writers and um, uh, kind of pitching the ideas of the book and, and, okay. and hopefully working with writers and, and allowing these principles to influence their work. Um, I'm also a professor of film and television at Syracuse University uh, in upstate New York and it's about four hours north of the city okay. so they get snow and it's cold you know? yeah. so here I am. So, so you're here at uh Idiatum to give a story on Save the Cat. Can you briefly explain what the Save the Cat methodology is? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's this book um, about story, right. um, but the application of it um, perhaps is to try to figure out the structure of film uh, the, and television and I guess virtually any story that we're looking at. Um, to be able to take an idea and become excited with an idea and then do something with it and right. start to discover a beginning, middle, and end of that idea. Okay. Um, I think that's where the method uh, is, serves the writers best. Right. You still have to go write the thing, um, but if you notice and if you read the book, these 15 beats are a way to hopefully try to map out a story before you start to hide away and go do it. Um, uh, it's a great way to kind of uh, perhaps discover something that might work okay. or not work before you get 60 pages in and right. write yourself into a corner that can't be escaped. Um, so these workshops that I teach in New York, they'll do that. Writers will come in, they'll pitch ideas, and, uh, and over the course of the weekend, we'll discover the 15 beats, the beginning, middle, and end of that story. Um, you know, we kind of talked about it today. I don't know if Blake really invented anything new, but he kind of discovered this easy, breezy, accessible language um, about story. And as you, as, as you, as you explain, it's based on averages, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, critics, I think there's ways, we've talked about this, there's ways to misinterpret this. Yeah. Critics say it's paint by numbers and how dare you and everything, every story is going to be the same. That's not the case. Yeah. I use this in my class in Syracuse. Every single semester I get 45 scripts yeah. that are completely different and unique. They have beginning, middle, and ends. There's different characters different arcs, different moments, different worlds, different tone. They're as vast and diverse as anything you've seen. Right. So I don't think that's the case. Um, I think if you are too exhaustive in, in, in how you adhere to some of these ideas, like page numbers are scary. Yeah. If you were to hit page 12 and say, well, something better happen right now or else, I don't think that's the way you think about story, and I think that does a misjustice to this this, this method yeah. of of structure. Because it's supposed to be organic. Yes, and it's who wants to, re you know? Did you go to do you go to movies and come out and say I really like that because the catalyst happens on the right page? <laughs> no, you it's say I love it. that because it reminds me of an ex-girlfriend. Right. Well, I love that because I was scared when I had my first job. Right. Uh, hopefully, these. Beats can be learned and then forgotten, and you can access and write a real story with a real character. Right. That's the goal. Okay. That's the goal. Uh, so a lot of people that um, participated and that want to participate in the in the following events like this, can you talk to us about the importance of structure? Like for example, a lot of people don't think about structure. 
when you're when you're formulating or coming up with, a, with an idea, you're just trying to come up come up with cool stuff. But can you talk about the importance of structure, of learning the basics of story structure? Yeah, I mean, I think you know we talked today about ideas and what is a good idea or what do you do with it once you have it. I think it's exciting. It's easy to get excited about an idea and say, "Whoa, this is brilliant." Right. It's much harder to map it out. Yeah. And to actually discover the narrative of that idea and okay. see if that idea can sustain in interest for two hours. Yeah. That's kind of cool yeah. and perhaps not an easy task. Sometimes we might wake up in the middle of the night with this great idea that maybe is not a whole t television show or a whole movie, yeah. but it's a scene right. or it's a blog or it's a commercial, right. or it's a moment in a bigger narrative. Why not try to discover some of those things before you go right. start the process of writing and the... Help of these concepts. Sure, right. sure. Um, I know I asked this on the conference, but for people still looking at this uh, interview, can you talk to us very, brief, very uh, briefly about your work in How to Train Your Dragon? Yeah, so we talked a little bit about that today. Um, I, I take zero credit for the success of that film. Right. Chris. Um, uh, a friend of Save the Cat and of the community and a, a person I used to be in a writer's group with, uh, Dean DeBlois, was a co-writer and a co-director. He's become the sole writer and director of the future film, the sequels. Yeah. Um, Dean DeBlois was hired to um, uh, co-adapt and co-direct with his buddy and, and cohort and, and uh, friend Chris Sanders. Right. They had worked together in Lilo and Stitch. Uh, Katzenberg and DreamWorks had tried to make this ad adaptation for quite some time. Yeah. It had not worked. And so Chris and Dean, I think, were their last attempt. Yeah. And they were hired to work on the project. And they, I think they had a ticking clock where okay. DreamWorks Animation said, you must, it must come out at this time or else. Okay. Um, so they, both of them worked tirelessly to write this thing, yeah. to animate it, to work with the entire team of DreamWorks Animation. And it was right towards the end, a few months before being released, yeah. they invited Blake Snyder of Save the Cat and our writers group, me and Jeremy Gerlich and Dan Goldberg. Dean invited us to watch a rough cut of that film. Uh, some scenes had been colored and finished uh, others and animated completely, others were little stick figures. Yeah. And sometimes they'd say, and then the dragon goes this way. Um, okay. So we were hired to watch a rough cut of that film and for a day at the studio sit in a room and using the principles of Save the Cat, try to knock around the structure yeah. and try to figure out if, po first of all, discover any holes in the thing, yeah. uh, but secondly, to try to um, uh, improve it structurally right. uh, or improve transformation uh, character arc moments or uh, little pitches or big pitches. Some of the ideas we had uh, um, related to scenes that had been already been fully animated and it would be way too expensive to make those changes um, and we had to realize that and say okay good idea but we're not going to do it yeah. and then others were were more able to, to be to be flexible. Okay. Um, so, oh, I don't know, it's been such a long time, I, I can't even remember the direct influence yeah, we've had, years. but um, <laughs> what a great experience it was, and, yeah. and what a great experience it was to, to take these ideas, these theory things, these things in a book, yeah. and actually see them in real life application. Apply them in Absolutely. Real okay. That was very cool. Uh, just so. to close, um, a lot of the people that submitted uh, their projects to be considered for the contest were obviously not uh, admitted or were not did not pass the test. Okay. Do you think they can like if they rework that idea with the help of story structure? Yeah. they'll come out with a stronger uh, proposition or stronger idea. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think we're always looking. Uh, at how to be better. Yeah. There's so many different. I go on Amazon and go type in screenwriting books. There's hundreds. Yeah. There's so many different ideas. I think we're all talking about the same thing. Yeah. We're all trying to tell stories. We're trying to tell things with a beginning, middle, and end, perhaps. Um, uh, and I think as we continue to learn these different methods and challenge our own work. I hope the goal is that it does become better. And even if the thing is good, that rough cut that we saw at the first uh, How to Train Your Dragon was fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were trying to tweak it and do these little things. I think you see this as you see interviews with writers and directors, even of films that have been successful critically in, in the box office. 
the directors always in interviews say, oh, I wish I had done this. Yeah. You know, there's always this idea of trying to be better or to trying to discover the better story. But I think it's certainly a good tool set to use yeah. on old projects, on new projects. There's only so many ways that we can go right and wrong when yeah. we're figuring this stuff out. Yeah, like for example, John Lazar says that stories have to be taken away from the writers uh -huh. because they can endlessly keep yeah. tweaking them. It's right? hard to kill your babies, right? Yeah, it's hard it's to let go of these <laughs> things and particularly if the story is personal yeah. to us. It's kind of like a psychologist. I think psychologists can see people on the outside and say, you, be you better get out of this relationship. That's horrible because I'm here, mm -hmm. right? But you're in, and when you're in it, you can't tell you can't that. See it. It's the same thing with the story. Right. These people that, uh, some of these people that come to the workshops in New York, They've wrestled with this idea for years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the ones that say, oh, this is based on my grandmother. You say, uh-oh, <laughs> oh, careful. It's personal. Uh, yes, because well, you have to be both personal and authentic and bring all of those yeah. great experiences that you're connected to and then put a story hat on. Objective hat. Yeah, and then actually tell a good story. And if lying is involved, go lie. Yeah, lying is important. Lying is good. Writers are good liars. Yeah, <laughs> what a nice way to leave the, you know, yeah, exactly. a nice note to leave the interview. Jorge Gutierrez, which uh, a film director that was one of the guests okay. here at Pixel Apple, says that his grandfather used to say that you don't let the truth get in the way of a good Absolutely. story. Absolutely, right? absolutely. The same is, you know, uh, the same is true of adaptations. Yeah. Uh, what, what you owe the original content is nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, tell, yeah, and tell the best story. I, I remember um, looking at this film, um, uh, Beautiful Mind that came out, yeah, and Akiva Goldsman, uh, the, the book, it was based on the book, he read the book about John Nash, and in the book, he doesn't have visual hallucinations, so Akiva created that, and I asked my students, well, why would he lie, why it ever, because it takes, it's a teach, it shows a better film, yeah, it's, it's a, a better, bigger story it's a of it, but it's an events, it changes, so that's very cool. Good. All right, good. Can you, can you tell us where you can find more about Save the Cat? Yeah, so, um, listen, there's a website. Uh, it's called, it's at, you can be found at www.savethecat.com. Okay. Uh, there's information about uh, workshops, uh, online classes. Um, there's also this very cool, um, they kind of teach, the, they keep this uh, alumni blog of people that are part of the, uh, fans of the book or have you, yeah, that have used the book. Um, and successes that they've discovered. Okay, cool. uh, so it's nice. So look us up there and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see you. Well, we'll see you around. Much, thank you for having me. Yes. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks.